as you guys see in the videos, I got to do it now because I'm going nuts. I got to go barefoot. I get comments about it. I don't wear shoes in my videos. But anyway, so let's go back to about when I was like 13 or 14, right? I've talked about my uh, introduction to the hobby many of times, but just a quick introduction for any of you who don't know who I am. Uh, starting out the age of six, I was really interested in animals and that sort of thing, nature. And it eventually got to the point where I'm keeping animals, right? And so this was, I don't know, 10 years or so after I was doing that. Like most young kids at that time period, I had a nice clown puke gravel tank. Uh, things started getting a little more intense when I got a 90 gallon tank here on the right bottom. Looking tough if you ask me. And then in the bottom left, uh, that was my 125, which I actually had set up throughout the years as various setups. And uh, that was, you know, you gotta start somewhere, right? Nowadays, after I've been in this hobby for 22 plus years, this is the kind of stuff I make. And it didn't happen overnight. A lot of hard work and effort, many years of blood, sweat, and tears goes into the things that you see behind my videos. So if you ever try to do something that you see me do or other people do who are very proficient in what they're doing, if you can't do it first try, don't be upset because everybody's got to start somewhere. So whenever I'm designing a tank, uh, there are four main considerations that I take into account. The first being the enclosure. Am I going to make it a vertical enclosure, horizontal enclosure? I'll talk more about that here in a moment. But filtration is also something that I think about. Um, what type of filter am I going to use? And then elements, so the hardscape elements and that sort of thing. You see me use those. And then livestock, obviously. So anyway, so again, with the tanks, you could go for a traditional tank, your rims tank. I think most days we don't really like to use those because they don't look that good, but they have their place. You got your rimless tank, a shallow front tank. So if you saw some of the paludarium type tanks out there where the front's a little bit shallower. You could also go to a hardware store, something like that where they sell planter pots. If you watch my video today, that's actually the one that I used in that and I set it up to be a little nano pond. Uh, you could also go to a, like a craft store, stuff like that. So it's not always like you need to go and set up an aquarium. If you go somewhere and you see uh, an enclosure or something that looks like it could be an aquarium, if you put your mind to it, you could do something. And then you can always make something from scratch if you're adept at that sort of thing. So again, I also take filtration into consideration. Depending on what my vision is for the setup, you know, a hang on back might work. If I want it to be out of sight, out of mind, I'll do a canister, a sump, or an internal. And then don't forget about your substrate and your plants. Those are my two favorite filtering items because you figure they work for you and they look beautiful and you don't have to spend it like you don't have to spend electricity on them that sort of thing we also got the elements in the tank so i always consider the hardscape it's the backbone of the tank you got to make it look good then you have your substrate backgrounds plants mechanical elements such as your lights power heads filters um, and then your building materials so i always consider all of those things and then our livestock of course everything that i just talked about it's all around the livestock in my opinion that's the most important aspect of the tank if you're not providing for the animals adequately and you're not considering their needs whenever you're selecting all of those items I chose previously, in my mind, you're not doing something right. So you could have nano fish, you've got your like, large fish like those silver dollars there. Obviously, they're going to destroy any plants that you put in the tank. So if you want to do something nice, you got to take the consideration. Are you going to use plastic plants? I don't really like to do that, so I'm going to use live plants. But you got you got to find some creative way to do it that's not just putting Rotala in the tank, for example, and they're going to eat it all. You have your crustaceans, semi-aquatic animals that are going to use most of the water, but they might need a land area. Fully aquatic animals, such as those frogs. And then water users, which they animals that would readily use water, but they don't necessarily need it to thrive. So the last thing I want to talk about before I really get into the meat of this presentation is the types of setups. Now, I get questions about this all the time, and it gets like the lines are very blurred but everybody i think knows what an aquarium is obviously we're at an aquatic convention um a terrarium and a, and a vivarium they're essentially the same thing it's just a box with plants that mimics a type of ecosystem a riparium is an aquarium where you have terrestrial plant growth coming out of the top and you can utilize those for filtration and that sort of thing and then a paludarium is kind of like a combination of a terrarium and an aquarium to where you have the riparian plant growth in that aspect of it, but you also have significant land areas, and that's something that you wouldn't see in a riparium. And then the ecosphere is just a sealed up aquarium, more or less. So let's say I wanted to build something like this. I'm sure some of you are familiar with this piece. It's the fire belly toad paludarium. But if I wanted to, you, you know, I was, I was driving somewhere, and I thought to myself, I want to make a paludarium. And obviously, this is the end result, but it's I think to myself, what would I need to consider to make that? So 
all this stuff that I talked about previously, livestock, filtration, those aspects of it, I'm gonna start with the livestock. So in the tank, I wanna house a fire belly toad. Now they're gonna use the water. They're, I would consider them to be water users to where they don't necessarily need water to thrive, but they'll want land areas and aquatic areas. And then I have white cloud mountain minnows. They'll be living in the water feature along with cherry shrimp. So I gotta think of what are these animals gonna use? What are they gonna need whenever they're inside of the enclosure? So again, these are the things that I wanna make in the enclosure. So I'm in, my, I'm in my head, I know. I wanna make a paludarium. Obviously, I told you what I'm gonna stock it with but I also want the setup to include a drip wall or a waterfall on the back. I want to include a, water, a large water feature as large as possible because I want the fish to have an adequate body to swim in and then the toads that I'll use it as well. Uh, but I don't want it to be like any other just sort of setup where it's a land and then water. You know, if you, if you put like a divider in the back of the tank and it was just a half and half sort of thing, because that would look kind of boring. So I wanted to do like an island look to where there's multiple land areas and you, you can go all around them or the animals could. I also wanted to include aquatic and terrestrial plants. Obviously you could get the, the territory barriers for all of the animals, but also for filtration purposes because if you can include terrestrial plants in your tank, once they get established, they're a very good filter for nutrient export. And when you have a really established sort of riparian type setup, you're gonna have to do very minimal water changes. And really, I know Rob just said that He's, he recommends topping off with RO water and that sort of thing so that you don't get the uh, excess mineral buildup. The plants are gonna take it up, so you could kind of work around it in that, that aspect. I also wanna have a natural rock background. I'm sure that you guys have seen like the universal rocks type backgrounds and the, uh, I can't think of the other one right now, but those, those custom backgrounds, I didn't wanna do that. I wanted natural rock and a natural aesthetic overall. The tank, I have a 40 gallon breeder here, just the, the basic one. Uh, that's what I had to work with, so I figured I'll use it. And then, so I'm thinking, what kind of filter do I wanna use in this tank? Well, I wanna maximize the space within the tank. And so, uh, hang on back doesn't really make sense because I can't filter the water properly and neither does an, an internal filter, so a sump makes sense. So I have all of my materials there, the, the plumbing items and the canister filter itself, and I had to drill the tank to make accommodations for those. Filtration continued. I also wanted to include a decent substrate, because as I said, that will filter out your tank along with plants, which I just explained a moment ago. Now, what kind of elements am I gonna need to build this sort of thing? So again, what, what am I gonna use for hardscape? I decided on Oko Dragonstone and Spiderwood. Those seemed like elements that would create a cool aesthetic with those animals, create different areas of interest. And also, I think Dragonstone's really good for shrimp because they can climb in all of the different spaces and whatnot, so I thought that would be a cool look. I also wanted to include sand for obvious reasons. And then I always like to include botanicals in a lot of my setups, so leaf litter, seed pods, that sort of thing. You guys have probably seen them. It creates cool gra grazing areas for the shrimp, and as they break down, they also produce nutrients for the plants and that kind of thing. I also need uh, geotextile fabric and sphagnum moss. I'll talk more about those in a little bit. And uh, more elements I had to include was glass, egg crate, silicone, expanding foam, zip ties, and super glue gel. Uh, these are just building materials and um, tried, tried and true items that I've had that I know are safe for animals. So again, going back to what I said I wanted to achieve with this tank, I wanted a paludarium with a drip wall on the back. So some of those elements I showed just a moment ago, I used to create a little overflow box on the back of the tank. And then I thought to myself, so I wanna make the natural rock background in the back of the tank. It ends up being about I think it was 60 pounds worth of stones that I used to put on the back. You couldn't just stack them up the back of the tank. Inevitably, they would fall over uh, as you go through, you know, maybe a year, two years. It would happen eventually. But I thought to myself, what I could do is silicone strips of egg crate and create like a skeleton on the back of the tank. And with this, I could um, use that as a, as a skeleton for the stones. So what I did is I built up all of the... I built these land areas out of the egg crate as well, and you'll see I covered them in that fabric. And the reason I did that was so when I fill them up with the substrate, it doesn't pour out into the rest of the setup, and it creates little islands. So I built up the hardscape around the islands that I just showed, and also on the background. And I used the expanding foam around the stones, which locked into that egg crate, so that way it creates a strong network that holds it all in. So that achieved my goal of creating the islands and the, um, the background with natural rock. But 
it created a problem where you'll see that the expanding foam doesn't look very nice between the rocks. So what I did is I broke up some stones and I super glued it in between them and put the, the rock dust on them, which conceals it. And then you end up with the finalized hardscape there, which I, I think looks pretty good. And you guys know, or most of you should know from watching my videos, if you can get yourself a nice hardscape to, to start, your tank's gonna look good even if the plants uh, don't look good initially. From there, I went on and I planted the setup. Rather, I filled it with the substrate, then I filled it in the front of the tank and I added all of the plants. With any tank, I think you, it, it helps to add accent elements. So I put little stones and stuff like that throughout the front of the scape to add some more interest. And then from there, it was pretty much just finishing up the tank. I added the water, I dropped in the botanicals, added the fish and shrimp and the toads. And here you can see just kind of some final shots of the tank, everything enjoying the setup. And again, going back to what I said initially, the primary consideration is always the animals. What are they gonna find the most use out of? What are they gonna really enjoy? And um, for me at least, I, I observe my animals a lot. So I see what, what are they gonna use? What are they gonna climb on? What kind of aspects of the setup? are they gonna use? So this, I think, in my mind, is the, the perfect environment for the animals that I showed earlier. They all thrive in there, the white clouds breed. I think it's a beautiful thing, but all those sorts of principles and things you can take into my other setup. So this one, I just wanted to create a simple, a simple scape that is easy to maintain and that when I would go in the tank, it wouldn't move around. So all of the hardscape, it's, it's um, foamed in there and then I siliconed the moss on there and so those were some considerations I took as I was building that. And then this was a uh, this is a pretty fun one. So it's a, a black water uh, biotype for Ultima Angel fish that I did for a buddy of mine. And uh, he told me sort of what he wanted. He, he went down to Peru a couple years ago, and he really wanted me to, to create that look. So he showed me a couple of images that he captured from it. So I, I tried my best to replicate that look. But I thought to myself, how can I create something? Because he's not a fish guy. So I was thinking, how can I create something that's easy for him to maintain? And uh, at, at the, com the complete way that this tank is built was built around just easy maintenance. And he sent me a picture um, last week, actually, and the angelfish started spawning. So I'd say that was a successful operation. Uh, again, with this, just a, a very simple nanoscape. I wanted something that was easy to maintain, so I just loaded it up with plants, and this tank, I do a water change on it maybe every six weeks, and that's it, I and no CO2, nothing like that, that's a low-tech tank. All, actually, all of my tanks are low-tech, but um, a riparian type tanks, you know, same thing. I just, I think to myself, I wanna have a setup where the plants are growing out of the top, so I built it accordingly, and the last one that I wanted to finish up on was this tank, and for me, this, this is my favorite tank. It wasn't stocked in this picture, but I have, seven silver dollars awesome fish i think they're beautiful the issue though is you can't have plants with them they'll, they'll destroy everything so how can i get around doing that well it makes sense to make a riparium or it also makes sense to make a paludarium i couldn't make a riparium because the tank is so tall the tank itself is four feet tall and to get plants that would grow that tall it just it just wouldn't work so what i decided to do is i have all this driftwood work in here and that creates a land feature for all of the, the plants to rest on but that's pretty much all I got for you guys. Take care and no, I'm not, I'm not ending on that. We'll get some questions. So we got, who's got some questions? Anybody? Or was it terrible? How do you get a perfect beat? Because when I made a fish tank, I followed your video and my beat sucks. Like I did the tape and stuff, but I still messed it up. Okay, so he's asking how to get perfect beads of silicone. So there are a couple of things that you could do and there's actually ways that you could fix it if you did it and it, it was messed up. So he mentioned about taping it. I, I would say in my mind, that's the easiest way to do it. So you would uh, apply the silicone and that will tape it up, apply the silicone and then clean it up with your finger. If when you pull off the tape, and I assume this is probably what happened with you, when you pulled off the tape, it, the excess that was on the tape kind of like fell back over into the tank. Is that about right? Or if, if when you pull off the tape, it were to peel back over like that, after the silicone dries, you could just go back with a razor blade and like cut, cut it from the side and clean it up that way. You could also, if you p put down the bead and it was all wacky looking, you could actually get, get a razor blade and cut straight down and then cut off the excess. So you could get around the taping process entirely like that. Although I would say that if you do that, the this, this seal might not be as strong, but I've done it with a lot of my tanks. Um, does, that, does that help? Okay, anything else? Uh, you just like tips for beginner aquascapers? Um, 
So I think a lot of times you see like stuff that I did and what uh, George Farmer, you know, there's all, all kinds of great aqu aquascapers out there. And it's really easy to look at their work and then you, you set something up and you're like, man, it just, it doesn't look as good as what they're doing. It just doesn't compete with them. Or um, if, I don't know if you're posting your pictures of your tanks anywhere, things like that, and people will say, oh, I don't like how it looks and whatever. At the end of the day, like you, you got to start somewhere and if you're starting to escape and it looks good to you, just just keep rolling with it. Eventually you'll get to a point to where it, you know, it will start to look like the things that I did. And I, I know it's kind of like vague, but also I would just say um, experiment as much as you can. I don't know if you saw the video where I, I made the escaping sandbox and I, I moved stuff around in it. I think that that can really help because like for me growing up, I played with Legos, blocks, and I was always building stuff. And it's all in practice. So if you can set if you can set up one of those sandboxes and just mess around with the the stones and stuff, it, it will really get you the experience without having to set up 50 tanks to get to a point that you otherwise would. So I think at the end of the day, you could do um, like you could do anything with primitive tools. It just is going to take longer than if you were using a precise laser cutter or a 3D printer, things of that nature. And Honestly, I would say that in a way, having to, to find out how to use primitive things to make things that are not necessarily primitive, it builds the creative muscle even further. So like, whenever I started the channel for a while, I just, the, the lighting I used was a, a, one of those like metal dome lights from Home Depot. I just stuck it to the ceiling with a paper clip. And I, 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 that's honestly like just how the whole channel is, you know, just how, how can I make do with what I have? And, uh, if you really just look around your house and see the things you have, you can make a, a lot with very little. So, like, are you asking if, if I would consider myself successful or, like, if, if at a point you would consider yourself successful? No, the setup itself. Like, your aquarium. Oh, oh, I got you. I, got you. Um, I would say that if, you know, after a certain amount of time that the animals are exhibiting certain behaviors and things. And I wouldn't necessarily even go down the route of the longevity of the setup because perhaps it was successful for a couple of months and then it, it sort of died and then you had to do something new. Because if, if you learn something from that process, then it was successful. But I would say that if, if the animals are thriving, they're exhibiting normal behaviors and things like that, and it everything appears to be doing good, then in my mind, that would be a successful setup. At heart, I'm a perfectionist, so I, I understand that very well. And it's you, you just get so fixated on something that it doesn't work. But if, if I ever get to the point with scaping, at least, where um, I find myself where I just keep adjusting things and they're not working right, I just get rid of it and start over again because it's almost like it's a, a losing cause. Yeah, you might be able to find it the, the combination that looks right, but everything that I do is based on my time. So if I was going to waste two hours trying to fit some other thing, Whereas if I were to restart it and maybe do a, a complete scape in 20 minutes, I would have rather have done that. And um, I don't know, I, I would say that. But sometimes it could help to just step away. I don't know. <laughs> that would be my answer to it. You're saying that if, if the phone broke down and uh, affected the water parameters? Uh, honestly, I've... I've been using this stuff, <laughs> no pun intended because it's great stuff. Um, I've been using it for like I don't know, at least 12 years, and I've never noticed that it broke down to the point to where it was affecting the animals in any negative way. And um, I, I think that as, as long as there's not actual pieces coming out and the fish are ingesting it and that sort of thing, it's, it's probably totally fine. I don't really think that's the right material for the job, to be honest. I would probably go, I honestly would just find a, a, a stone that feels smooth, so maybe like a river rock or something like that. and glue them or silicone them together. I just think that if you're trying to do it with the foam, it's not it's not going to do what you want it to do. And it's going to be more work than it's worth. The ideas? Um, <laughs> honestly, they just come to me. I'll just be driving to Home Depot or something like that. And it, it's kind of like what I was explaining. So I'll, I'll think to myself, I want an aquarium that over. So I don't know if you saw the overflow aquarium. I thought to myself, if, if I want an aquarium that overflows continuously, yet is an effective system, how do I do that? So I came up with the idea of it overflowing, right? And then I take all those principles, so filtration, livestock, all those things, and I essentially build my idea off of those, knowing how those other elements work. Uh, yeah, so I did a build for um, Kenan two days ago, and it was for a, a black-throated dragon. So that was... a. It, it's not too much bigger than the, um, the bearded dragon now, but eventually it will. So that 
was one, and that video will be out next week. But I would say that for myself personally, I've been thrown around the idea of getting a snapping turtle again. If I do, that could be one. Um, and I'm also trying to uh, pull some strings to do stuff at the Pittsburgh Zoo. So if that works out, whatever large animals they have, I could potentially do something with that. I don't know. I, there's, there's definitely plans to do it. I just I don't quite know what they are yet, but I will. So stay tuned. Oh, I'm going to offend about three quarters of the convention here. But <laughs> no, I, I like... I like saltwater tanks, and I like anytime I see a, a nice one at the pet store or something like that, I look at it, and I'm like, man, that's cool. I would want to do it. And I, I really like, like the, the crustaceans and the cleanup crew. They're very interesting to me. And to be truthful, I think it is something that I will do at one time. But as I'm out here and I look at the saltwater stuff, it just it doesn't do it for me. Like I, I don't look at these uh, black light lit setups, and I'm like, like salivating over it. I see something with tanks and I'm like, yeah, that like that's my jam. So it's a, a lot of it's a preference thing, but I um, I do think at some point I will. And perhaps at that point I'll be like, next time I come to one of these after I've set up a saltwater tank, I'll be like, because I actually understand what I'm looking at. I, I don't really have a frame of reference to know exactly what I'm looking at. So, all right. Take care and peace.